I'm going to come up with the advice in just a few minutes, but we have a very special guest with us here tonight. And the person I'm about to bring up here is a friend and a mentor of mine who's done tremendous things to make Anne Arundel County the best place to live, work, and start a business. So a man that needs no introduction, our county executive, Steve Shue. Good evening, everybody. First of all, this is a great crowd. This is awesome. What an incredible show of support. that he spoke to people about on their doorsteps and that work ethic he's brought with him to the city of Annapolis and his work as mayor. Cleaning up government, getting control of the budget, making Annapolis a better run and a better place to live. And it's meant a lot to me personally in my career capacity as county executive because we have a partnership between county government and the city of Annapolis that has probably never existed before. We are working together on so many things in a cooperative way that benefits everyone, residents of the city and residents of the county. We can never have a fully successful Anne Arundel County unless we have a fully successful city of Annapolis. Steve said a lot of what I wanted to cover, but I'm going to touch base on a few things. You know, we got a two-pronged attack plan for this re-election. It takes people and it takes financial resources. And by your presence here tonight, you represent the people part of it. That's the grassroots. You know, we think that, you know, Mike probably snuck up on the group last year and he snuck up on it because that kid worked harder than any other politician out there and he won by less than 60 votes. People matter. So take your pictures tonight, get them out on Facebook, get them to your friends, call your friends, Tell them to get engaged. We're going to need a stronger effort next election, and we're going to need that grassroots help. In addition to that, it's going to take a significant financial commitment, and that's where the Finance Committee comes in, and it's where a lot of the folks in here tonight uh, that stepped up as sponsors. Uh, if you look at the boards on each side, those are individuals that uh, made a financial commitment at some higher levels. Those are very, very important. It's going to take more than twice what we had the last election to win this time. So a lot of you will be hearing from me. Please take my call. If you answer the first time, I promise I won't call you 10 times. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to uh, have our Senator, Ed Riley, who's served in our House and Senate for a combined 14 years and a tremendous leader for our community. I have a very simple job. I've got to introduce Mike Panellides to some to a room full of people who know Mike Panellides. But I know Mike Panellides better than any of you, except maybe the mom and the dad. Mike has faced difficult decisions as mayor of the city, and he has done well. So let's hear it for Mike Panellides. Yeah. Look at this crowd. We have over 350 people here, and I just want to let you know I appreciate it. Events like this don't happen by magic, and I want to thank the host committee. I want to thank our caterer, Jasmine, for putting on this great event, and all of you for coming out tonight. So let's give them a round of applause. I have a chance as mayor to talk to a lot of groups. Whenever I do a speech, I always try to change it up and do something different. And tonight, I want to talk about the positive things. What's right with Annapolis and what's right with America? Because too often in the news and media, all we hear is the negative things. So I'm going to start off by something that we all care about, money. Before I came into office, the city was on an unsustainable path. We were living beyond our means. And we were treating the taxpayers like an ATM. The previous administration had raised taxes twice, doubled the water bills, and had to borrow $10 million just to meet payroll. Since I've been in office, we've, had, we've passed two consecutive budgets without raising taxes, we've cut trash bills by 30%, and we've put money back in people's pockets. There's always pressure to raise taxes, but one of the things I learned is you have to be innovative, thinking outside of the box. 
And just one of the many things we've done is the Annapolis Renewable Energy Park. The city had a closed landfill that was costing us money every year. We turned around, we're going to put up 50,000 solar panels. It's going to bring in $5 million for the city, create jobs, and clean up our environment. When you look at the downtown area, most of you who haven't been, we have a brand new city dock down there. And we built that on schedule and a million dollars under budget by solid management and leadership. Yeah. One issue that's come to Annapolis when people talk about it, people always have a negative thought on or a headache is the market house. There's probably no other issue that people think of a negative opinion than that. But since I've been in office, it's been open every single day. We brought in new management, we brought in new vendors. And for those of you who haven't been, I encourage you to go. We brought back fried chicken, we brought back oysters, and it's a great place to be in Annapolitan. So please make it down there. And so when I think about what do I owe this success to? We owe it to the transition team, for their involvement. I owe it to my city council, especially Alderman Fred Payone, and I owe it to all the people I've met because helping people and meeting people is the best part of the job. It reminds me of why I ran for office. The challenges we face are hard. The heroin epidemic, flooding, crime, all these issues that we're facing, the only way we can do them is facing them together. As an elected official, government can't do it all, and I constantly rely on people to help me out. We're standing in a church. One of the first things I did was a faith-based initiative. I had over 40 people, whether they were Christian, Jewish, whatever their denomination, come together. So I wanted to hear from people about the challenges they were facing and what I can do to help them, not tell them what they can do for me. I think the biggest challenge we face is that we stop believing in ourselves. Maybe just because I'm young and I'm not jaded by the process yet, but I truly believe that we can do anything we put our minds to. When you think of an issue like flooding, something that's that important that affects Annapolis probably more than any other city. Everybody says you can't do it, it won't get done, why bother with it? But that's not the approach I take. I reached out to Governor Hogan, I asked him for some money to start it, and he gave us a million dollars because he believed in it and he knows it's a real problem. One of the other issues I want to talk about is the housing authority. And this is a, a personal issue. You know, a lot of times as mayor, you hear about helping businesses, you hear about you know, helping different things, but you're judged by what you do for the least among you. I'm saying that we're in church. And when I look at the housing authority and the way people were treated, it was an embarrassment of the city. And I realized that when I got elected mayor, I represent all of Annapolis. I'm the, I'm the mayor of every single person in this city and I'll knock on their doors. So what did I do? I said, I gotta take a leadership role. We gotta get something done. I was the first mayor to go to Washington, D.C., and I demanded that they have better services. I found top-notch commissioners to put on the Housing Authority. And by the way, let me say this, because I want to recognize two of them that are here today. As mayor, you get to appoint a lot of people to boards and commissions, liquor board, planning commission. People always say yes. It is very hard to find people to serve on this board. And I want to recognize Sandra Chapman and Chip Dorden and Chris Flynn for being here. Let's give them a round. When I went there, and we decided to inspect all the units, I didn't know how to take it. We're coming into people's homes. What are they going to say that we're coming in there? And i got to tell you, we got a great response. The number one thing they said is we're finally glad that someone cares. Someone cares enough to show up. And that's half of the job is showing up. So let me close by saying this. It's been an honor to serve as your mayor. These last two years have been the best years of my life. We're doing things differently. We're balancing budgets, we're delivering projects on schedule and under budget, and we're doing it with a can-do attitude. We've come a long way, and I have to tell you, the best things that are going to happen are what we're going to do in the future. Thank you so much, and God bless you for being here.